Okay, this is a video for uh, the second project part. And uh, we're going to make this grip out of the first part. So, um, <coughs> first, take a look at this. Um, um, before we start, okay, um, we're going to build this part on based on the first part. So what we do is not a new file, but instead you want to find the handle you just made okay, and open that part. <clears throat> so because the grip goes outside of the handle, um, we will be using this as um, a base. So they're going to match perfectly. Um, that's why we save the handle as and uh, your your grip. So uh, for demonstration, I just put this on my desktop. Okay. So now uh, notice we are in the new file. Okay. So first step is save as another part. Then we're gonna take out the shell. Um, the reason being is uh, when extruding the script, then you need to cut this hollow. Okay, so because that goes outside of your grip, and when you cut this hollow, uh, we use this solid um, to as a tool to do a subtract. So this will go into the solid, and uh, if you have shell, you're gonna leave a lot of volume inside. <clears throat> then we're gonna make a sketch, extrude, uh, make a top a little bit uh, smaller at the end, then. Because we made a half, so we can mirror to the other side and uh, do some, uh, you know, minor adjustment. So um, this part is less critical because this is um, mostly aesthetic. It's a rubber uh, grip, and uh, we do made, I did make uh, those uh, things on the side. So, but that's not required. Anyway, so that's the whole process, and uh, we're gonna start from the sketch. Okay, and this time I'm not gonna talk too much about the the drafting things. Okay, so if you, um, so we have saved this as a new part, and we're gonna take out the shell. What you can do is you can actually delete this. Okay, although in the slides I said you can suppress that. Okay. So once we have this, we're gonna hide. The solid. Then, first step is build a new sketch. So let's turn this off. New sketch. So X Y plane. And here, um, since our grip is based on the handle, and this sketch will be based on the very first sketch of your handle. <coughs> And the idea is we want the thickness of the grip to be about 0.1 inch. Okay, on the third page, on the fourth page, you have a more detailed uh, zoom in sketch. Um, so the idea is we're going to project some curves from this first sketch so we can build another sketch on top of that. Okay, and uh, the project curve. Is in here. If you don't have it in here, that's because your row is not on the uh, advanced with full menu. Okay, on the default interface, you don't have this command. <clears throat> okay, so once we um, project curve, we want to project the, um, necessarily those red curves. Um, you can project the whole sketch from the first. Um, so if you project the whole sketch from the from the uh, the whole first the sketch, that's fine. Also, you can turn them into reference, but it's just um, too much on your on this new sketch. So I just project this one, this one, and let's see this and arc. Now what we have is the right side, this straight line, and the circle. Yeah, circle here. And say okay, and as you can see, uh, the projected lines they have different colors. Now, um, all the reference we need from the first sketch is there. We don't need the first one anymore. We can hide it. Okay. By the way, don't uncheck it 
that's suppressed, uh, you're gonna lost the, some dependency between those uh, features. <coughs> okay, so we have those lines projected. We can turn them to reference. Okay, so I selected points also. So if you never used that filter, now that's a chance. Turn to reference. Set back to no filter. So that's the um, the reference from the first sketch. And then we're gonna start from the top. We can go to this uh, zoom in version. So first we have a bigger hole. This hole here. Okay. And the reason being is in on the real thing. In around this hole, it's a rivet, and uh, the rivet is right. Uh, be tangent on the grip. So <clears throat> we start with the circle and uh, the radius is 275.275. Hit enter. Turn that to reference. We don't need to extrude that. Uh, and then we start from the top line. Okay. So we're going to use profile tool. Top line is horizontal, so we'll put this horizontal and this at angle. That one's at angle as well. And uh, it automatically added a constraint which we don't need here, so you can click on that and then right click and delete that. Apparently, I didn't click too much. <coughs> okay, now I'll just uh, hit delete key on the keyboard. So if you look closely, we do have a tangent constraint here. That's what I said about the rivet. That's actually tangent to the grip here. So we're going to select the arc or the circle and select this line, make them tangent. Okay. Then uh, we're going to add some dimensions. And uh, that's the reference lines. By the way, the reference lines. They are constrained because they ba they're based on the first sketch, <coughs> so you don't need a dimension for them. All right, so we're gonna start from the top, uh, 0.9 inch. Okay, so from this line to this top right, this line it's gonna be 0.9 inch, and then we do have a horizontal distance. It's 0.1 inch is the thickness of the grip or the offset of the grip from your metal parts the metal handle and the total distance of this top is 0.45 inch then we have two angles here we go along the line here then uh, between those two that's 120 degrees and between the horizontal and this line is 10, 10 degrees and uh, we can see they turn the color change that means they're well constrained except this point we're gonna add that later and what we're gonna add that now so from this point to this projected curve is 0.1 inch again and you can see where we are going um, this point to the metal Handle is 0.1 inch, and the same goes on the right side. All right, so we're gonna go down from this left side, <clears throat> and the, the radius 0.8 here tells me this is a fillet. Um, of course, you can put a three-point arc there, but uh, that's how I did. I I did a straight line down, a line down, and a an arc, then put a filling later. So let's do a straight line down and a three point arc, which is uh, not tangent. Okay, should not be tangent. Then this is a little bit off. But anyway, there's reference line here. It's horizontal, and uh, those two arcs are tangent to this horizontal reference line. So I'll make a reference line. 
make it a reference. Then notice this endpoint is on the reference line. So I click this point, click the line, and it'll give us uh, the tangent as a constraint you can use. So that's one. Then we can make some tangent. Okay. And notice when you click, uh, you, if you want to pick an arc, you have to go outside of the circle. If you go inside the circle, it'll, it's going to pick the center point. All right, and uh, if you wish, you can add the um, the um, fillets now, but we're gonna keep going. Okay, so that's another three point arc from the end point. Might need to wait to find the end point or start start point, and let's make this tangent also, because that's also tangent. Now we have. Another vertical uh, reference line, and they are tangent. All right, then uh, let's go to the bottom. Ooh. Okay, the bottom here. Let's go one page up. So you can tell this is an arc. Then the bottom is also an arc, and they are also tangent to each other because we want the profile to be smooth. So we need a two um, arcs. The top one is tangent from uh, the vertical reference line, so we keep that tangent symbol there. Then the bottom one is also tangent to the previous curve <coughs> this way uh, the whole profile on the left side is tangent then we have straight line here something like this yeah, I click too much time here and you can make this perpendicular it's actually perpendicular at the bottom and drag this point a little bit further up okay and this is not perpendicular so I'm gonna hit delete key all right and uh, we have a bottom uh, reference line for the total height of the grip so what you can do is um, you can dimension just from this point to that top I'll just keep the reference line then dimension from the bottom to this line here so that'll be this line and the distance is 5.45 5.45 and then we can add those vertical dimensions uh, we have uh, 1.56 from this tip to here 1.56 let me make this smaller a little bit and then uh, the tip goes uh, x direction 0.32 out of this vertical line so as you can tell this line is actually inside or to the on the right side now we can pull it up then dimension it. Otherwise, you will need a sort of like negative dimensions there. Okay, and this jumped up. Um, what we can do, we have this point one distance. Okay, so what we need is the fillet. So that'll be 0.8 in radius. Now I'll click the intersection point. So you don't have to click two lines there. Then uh, the distance 0.1 inch is between this point. You can tell from this point to the reference line. If you look from here. So either one. That's the distance, 0.1 inch. Again, that's the offset from the grip from to the metal. 
and uh, we can turn on the uh, dimension tool you can tell from the color color of the curves okay those top those lines on the top they're constrained this is not yet and it goes inside too much we can drag this point back okay it's not moving too much uh, let's see what we can do All about which point you're dragging. So if it's automatically apply some sort of uh, you know like tangent constraints, you can hold down Alt key to to disable the auto constraint temporarily. Then this way it's a little bit easier to drag things around. Then same goes to the bottom. What we'll leave there, we can use dimensions to constrain them. So this point here is 0.1 inch. Okay. And you're gonna find the right place to put them. Or you can put dimension between those two lines. Yep, 0.1 inch. And uh, what we have here. We can move down. See, we have this dimension from the bottom up to the intersection point of this two curves. So that's the distance, uh, 1.5 inch. 1.5. Now we have this perpendicular already. Then we don't have the angle. Okay. So let's see, we have this horizontal distance that will move this point back straight. So the distance are from this reference line which goes up to the hole. We just project it. That's a vertical line here. So what I need is a straight line from this hole and all the way to the bottom. We want this to be vertical and no weird constraints. Okay, that was because one of my control alt keys was hold down. Okay, so that's the reference line and trim this off. All right, so let's take a look on the third page. That's the point here. And then dimension from this point to this point is 2.5, uh, 0.25. So I'm sorry. 0.25 and then 0.3 to that point. So from here to here, horizontal distance 0.3. Then the total distance between this point and that point is 0.7 inch. Okay, so we're getting something there. Then this point goes up from the bottom. Uh, 0.35 inch, and it's constrained, as you can tell. Um, so all we need is to make this arc. To be on the left side with this dimension 0 0.05 so we probably need to drag this out okay without key and this is 0 0.05 from the starting point of the lower arc so this point to this need to position it right here 0 0.05 and let's take a look on the color this is all constrained except the, with the reference line so it doesn't matter <coughs> and uh, we finish the top left side button and we need to connect those two on the right side so this is a huge arc and that's a three-point arc from here 
to the bottom and there's something curvature in the middle so how do we control the curvature here um, we have this perpendicular on the top so you want this and the arc to be perpendicular I think that will constrain the arc already you don't really need this vertical reference line here yeah let's see four constraints okay one two three and four so that's all on the reference line and yeah, that means we're good um, let's finish sketch then we can extrude this part okay so remember last part uh, last part we did a symmetrical extrude and this time um, because last time when we do variable edge blend we have to pick top and the bottom edges this time we can just extrude a half of this then do a mirror to the other side so extrude first again you can use region boundary curve okay that'll um, take care of your uh, sketch if your sketch has uh, some lines sticking out so if you try to use connected curve you have to have a, a smooth closed loop anyway so the uh, extrude distance uh, 5 16th is the a half of the handle and we want the grip to be 0.1 inch uh, offset from your handle bigger than your handle so that's the extrude distance and we don't need any boolean here just say okay so that's a half of the grip then um, next step if you look from the side okay, the bottom tip is actually a little bit uh, skinnier that's why we need to make a sketch from YZ plane here so a sketch from YZ plane say okay and it'll take us to this view it's a kind of opposite of this and if you notice the x-axis on this sketch is pointing to the left that's here okay so I um, set here it's not horizontal at the bottom because when you do you draw a line that close to horizontal you can't really draw it not horizontal so what you can do is you can zoom in and put it on on curve it's still horizontal I think just delete that constraint or we'll drag this point down point on curve okay. so the this distance is based on this point stay on this edge okay then on the top it doesn't really matter because we only need the bottom to to cut our solid so here we can put like this way and automatically add added some constraints so we can delete those constraints the top we can make it horizontal but the bottom I do want to keep this on the edge with the dimension which is um, really small 365 okay so that's from the x-axis to this point is 0.365 zoom in say okay and you can't see the sketch anymore so we can turn to static wireframe to see through the solid then uh, next you can just extrude this piece and then we do need to extrude this piece all the way across your solid if you're not sure you can use symmetric to totally cover uh, the solid this way you'll make sure you have enough uh, intersection with the solid and then we can pick subtract from boolean and that's the subtract here the next we have some uh, edge blends to make it rounder smoother so first we need to take care of this sharp corner here edge blend this and 0 0.02 
hit enter that will give you the preview here we'll say apply so this command keeps uh, open then the next is 0.28 here on the top so we'll pick this one 0.28 uh, apply now we will run this edge here okay. that's apparently too big it's 0 0.05 <coughs> apply and then the last edge blend is uh, those three edges or four edges so this this and this okay let's say okay so those are the edge blends the next is the um, to make this piece hollow so now it's a solid piece there's no hole inside if you turn on the on your uh, grip you know they have uh, intersection or interference inside so what we need is we do a boolean subtract and we're gonna cut this piece using the handle that'll give us a snug fit between the rubber grip to your metal handle okay so that's pretty straightforward uh, next step I think I did skip one of the steps in the slides it's aesthetic so it doesn't matter that much if you notice in the slides it has a little um, chamfer here so that's the little chamfer I might need to add this before the uh, edge blend okay so what we can do is we can suppress those edge blend here um, chamfer I'm sorry and this is actually not symmetric and by the way this is not important this is not required so you don't have to follow this just make it look realistic similar to the real part so something like this then we will drag this transfer on top of the edge blend okay so the order does matter here then you subtract so you, you can yes you can drag features around as long as they're not uh, they do not have dependency if I click this chamfer you see this extrude 13 is red that means this chamfer is based on the extrude I cannot move this over 13 because the dependency between between them right <coughs> all right then um, okay mirror so um, it's hard to use mirror feature for this piece because we have so many features uh, to make this piece like half of the tree what we can do is there's another thing in associative copy is called instant geometry okay. instant geometry you have a couple different options you can translate and copy and you can mirror okay. so there are different options but we're gonna use mirror of this command and select object so here mainly you can select a solid body instead of uh, the features so that's what you have done so far don't have to worry about I just spent a hundred steps to make this and you have to mirror a hundred features then the symmetry plane is of course this one um, granted if this uh, this plane is on the XY plane so it's better to pick a data instead of a face on the solid okay that's the um, mirror in your um, instance geometry then next we need to uh, unite them I think I said didn't have a screenshot there but set it in the context so 
unite those two pieces, top and bottom. Okay, so they are one solid piece. If you didn't do that, take a look at this corner. Go back, you have a cut there. All right, next is the little cut, the little opening here. That uh, that's for the uh, the lock between two handles. So you do need a cut there. Now uh, what we do is uh, first we can hide the solid body and this sketch. Don't need that. We need to, to draw a square. Okay. Um, we need to draw a square and extrude and then subtract. But this is a cylindrical face, right? This is an arc. How do we draw a sketch on top of arc face? It will not let you select the cylindrical face. We need a datum there. So datum plane. And again, this is own curve because this is sort of like a tangent to your cylindrical face. Well, it is okay. So select curve is this curve, and uh, the distance 0.45. That's where the cut the uh, cut starts, and uh, the option usually is on normal to the path, but this time we need tangent to the path. Okay, so that's your datum. Then we're gonna start a sketch on the datum. So here. Um, in the slide, I put the origin there. We can put the origin there too. Ctrl Z, a sketch there, and you want to specify your origin to be the end point here. Depends on which way you want to look at your sketch. You can switch the Z direction so X Y is uh, flipped then this might be closer to the position in my slides then we have a rectangle and you know this is the symmetric part so we can put midpoint constraint there now make sure this is always symmetric and the, the right side from this view does not matter because we're going to cut into the solid that's on the left side of the rectangle. Then dimensions, uh, the cut is 0.45 inch deep. And uh, I mean, yeah, and uh, the width is 0.42 inch. That's all enough. Then extrude. We do want to extrude to the other, other direction, so let's take a look at the solid to make sure it, it covers everything symmetric, and that's enough for the cut. Here we're going to select subtract from the grip, that's the cut here. Okay, So I think we are down here, except this extra part, the texture on the grip here, okay, go to the top, this textures, um, just a, a little bit improvised, so they are lower than your uh, top surface, what we can do is we can use this command, offset surface, to get a smaller shape of uh, Oh, what well, that's a bigger face, right? And you do want the whole body, so pick everything, and it doesn't like it anyway. So I'm gonna select body faces, it's gonna pick the faces on this whole body, and we want to offset inward, make it smaller, something like this. Um, 0.2 inch, maybe not, 0 0.02 inch, okay, hit enter, so that's the distance, it's very subtle, and you can't see it really, uh, if you 
hide the bigger piece, you can see that's the little piece inside. Now what we do is we cut some openings on the bigger piece to expose the, the little one inside. And how to cut it, we need a sketch on the XY plane. That's here, from the top view here. Uh, when we draw, we can just hide your solid. Then this is really um, low dimensions. It's eyeballed. I didn't spend much time measuring this. So I do notice one thing on the on this is it's not aligned vertically straight down. It's aligned as sort of along a path, or along an arc. There's a curvature between those cuts. So what we do is we can make one cut, then we pattern this cut as a feature along a path, which is an arc. So first we're going to draw an arc here okay, for our path. And uh, since the first one is sort of vertical, we want that to be tangent to vertical. Okay, so this could be a reference and this is really eyeball so any place you want okay and uh, yeah the vertical line can be inverted downwards it's fine and you can adjust to this path to have a different pattern here Okay, then we have sort of like a box. It's not really a box. Um, so it's not horizontal. It's not perpendicular either. So I'm going to take them out. This might be easier just use line tools. But the top and the bottom is horizontal, uh, is parallel. So what we got is sort of like this. This part doesn't matter because we just need to cut into this. And we want this to be vertical, so you have a vertical edge here. And take a look at the general size. If that's too big, you can make it smaller. And something is snapping. So turn this off. You drag this. My keyboard is stuck sometimes. All right, I just use dimension. Uh, this dragging is not working. So distance between them, or well, horizontal distance of this is 0.3 inch, and. Uh, 0.5 inch or 0.25 between them. You don't have to follow this, by the way. This is this total eyeball. That's how I got it. See, um, my arc moved. So if you think your arc is at the pretty nice position, you can right click and apply a fixed constraint. Then the dimension you're adding on will not change it. Let's say 0.25. Then we have some fillets to make the edge blend and to make it uh, smooth. Okay, let's automatically apply a tangent. I'll hold down Alt key to kill that. And uh, maybe make it a little bit bigger. So I'll use dimensions 0.1. I'll make 0.02. Maybe that's well, you got the idea. You can play with the dimensions. I'm done here. Then uh, extrude this circle. Maybe use boundary curve. Then symmetrically, we need to show the grip we just made, and uh, don't show the offset. We want to cut the bigger one. So like this, and intersect. Uh, subtract so subtract from that say okay and you can see it just made a cut so now how the offset looks 
show the offset surface, then that's like your indent or the the texture on the on the grip. You can adjust the size a little bit bigger to make it deeper indent. That's a little bit overkill, but just for fun, right? Then we make a pattern here, pattern feature. Okay, so this time we pattern a feature. Okay. So first, to pick the feature is this extrude. Then we need to pick a layout is along a path, which is this circuit uh, arc. So we're gonna move down here to select this path, and there's direction here. And you want to go down, and you can choose counter and count and pitch. So I have five, and I want them to be 0.5 inch apart. That's the uh, distance. We can have a preview by clicking here. If you think that looks pretty good, then that's pretty good. Okay, so next. It's actually down here, but if you want to have a nicer look, you can hide all the sketches, leave only solid on the screen, and notice this thing here. Refresh. So let's take a look what happened. That might be the offset. That was not very nice. Uh, it's just the yeah, that's the offset. So let's take a look at what happened to the offset. So anyway, the the part is done already, and. If you feel like it's enough, you don't have to keep watching. Let's suppress this. Now I'm just doing all the unnecessary work. Mm, hide this. So the offset didn't go really well. Okay. And that might be it's too big. I'll make it 2 inch. So make sure this is smoother. I guess maybe it's the uh, edge bend here. It's smaller than 0 0.05. So once you go over that, it goes all crazy. Uh, 0.3 inch, 0 0.3. Now it comes up. Okay. So that's good. Sketch, shoot, pattern, show it. And if you like to, you can make it even more detailed. You can make this edge blend. See what happens. Sure, it will slow down your computer. And apply. It looks a bit nicer. And let's see. Yeah, so it's not that sharp anymore. You can even edge blend the inside. Um, before that, you need to do a unite between those two, so they have uh, they're gonna actually have an edge there. Go. On. So I'm gonna stop here. That's the grip. We're gonna do similar things to another grip on the other side. Uh, that thing has a little bit different shape, but that's pretty much the. The idea of a grip, you use the handle you made to to create the grip that's that'll have a perfect match to the handle. Okay, thank you for watching the video.